Hello Suction Addicts. That reminds me of the Five Star song, Suction Addict, from the 1980s. Suction Addict. A vacuum habit. Never can get enough. Well, we can't get enough of vacuum cleaners on this channel because we're all a little bit Fruit Loop here. And I admit it, yes. And I'm absolutely crazy because I've been using a Dyson for a whole month. A glutton for punishment, but to be honest, with this very lightweight, cordless, bagless Dyson, it, uh, it isn't as bad as I thought it might be. In fact, I'll go on record as saying, this is my favourite cordless Dyson vacuum cleaner, and I've got most of them, if you check back my playlist on my channel, all the Dyson cleaners I've shown you. But this Dyson V12 Detect Slim Absolute is my absolute favourite Dyson. Let's take a closer look and then later on, because it is vacuum of the month, I'm going to be revealing to you what I'm going to be using for the month of October. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here is the Dyson V12 Detect Slim Absolute for your consideration. Why do I prefer this to every other Dyson cordless I've shown you on my channel so far? There are a few reasons why I like this. One massive, massive reason why I prefer this above all the other Dysons is this red button. Watch, this is amazing for Dyson. Brand new technology. Can you believe that Dyson invented a permanent on-off switch? Watch, watch, come here, come here, watch. <laughs> Absolutely revolutionary technology. Dyson brought us bagless cleaning and now a machine you can just switch on and you're not having to put your finger on the trigger all times, which is an absolute pain in the finger. So that's revolutionary. I can't believe that Dyson managed to come up with that. Who'd, I mean, I can't believe it. Anyway, <laughs> I'm of course joking. Right, so that's why this, for me, beats every other Dyson I've used. And it's just a simple fact that customers of Dyson products have been screaming out for, they don't like the trigger, we want a permanent on-off switch. And Dyson said, oh, well, we don't put a permanent on-off switch to conserve the battery. So the first Dyson they put a permanent on-off switch has probably one of the smallest batteries and shortest run times. But anyway... I like it for that. I also like it, another thumbs up, we actually now have a removable battery, which means you can buy a separate battery if you want longer running time. It means you can charge the battery out of the machine. If you don't want to have this on the wall, on the wall bracket, you can put this away in a cupboard and charge the battery on your kitchen worktop and then just pop it in, or of course, you can, of course, just charge the battery while it's in the machine. When you charge the battery in the cleaner, when you uh, press the on-off button when it's charging, you will see how long it's got. And I can show you that. I don't think this has got a full charge because I have been using this earlier today. With the V12 on charge, you can press the on-off button and you'll briefly see how long the battery's got left to charge. So it's 50% charged, I'm gonna to have to leave it a bit longer to fully use it. Now, you know when the battery's running out, and this is a feature I only discovered while I was using it, the machine will pulse about three times, and I was cleaning my stairs earlier today using the main carpet and floor nozzle attached directly to the cleaner. And it pulsed three times, so it made me look at the display, and I think it says low power or low battery, I can't remember, but it just, reminds you or low runtime just 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 reminds you you've only got a few minutes left 
So I managed to finish cleaning the stairs and then I plugged it in in readiness for this video. So it's been plugged in maybe an hour. It's not fully charged obviously, but it's charged enough for me for me to make the video. So that that was good. Regarding the display, an absolute waste of time, really, to be honest. It's a nice little gimmick, but well let's just we'll put in the uh, fluffy laser head and we'll have a look at this display. Right. It's on medium. Now, apart from my living room where I normally had to use it on the eco setting due to my carpet, everywhere else in my home when using the attachments, when using the fluffy head and cleaning the other carpets, I always use the medium or automatic setting. So I think when you're using it with a small nozzle here, the, the uh, anti-tangle screw, I think it just goes on to medium. Or auto. It certainly works on medium without a motorised head on it. With the uh, motorised floor head, and I'm pretty sure with the laser detect head, medium switches to auto. This display here showing you the amount and size of your dirt particles is an absolute waste of time. The novelty of that wears off after about two minutes of ownership because when you're vacuuming, you're not looking at this display. No folks, no sorry Bob. What you're looking at when you're using a vacuum cleaner is where you're vacuuming, you look where you're going. You're looking at the floor head, you're looking at the carpet or floor, whatever surface you're cleaning on, you're looking at that, you're looking for bits of dirt in order to pick them up. You're not focusing on that little display. Now the display is useful for showing you various things like if you've, you know, if you've got low power, it shows you the power level, it shows you the runtime, all that's very useful. It shows you when you try and switch it on and the filter isn't properly connected or other, other faults, it'll tell you. So that's when you need it, that's good. But as far as the size of dust particles, pfft, yeah, it's, it's, it's a gimmick, I have to say. What isn't a gimmick is the, the dust or dirt detect feature. And you can, you can hear the machine ramping up. So as you're cleaning, if it comes across extra dirt, the sensors inside will detect that and it'll boost up the power until the dirt's gone and then it'll go back to a lower power so saving your battery. Now <laughs> that's nothing new either. In 1992 Hoover introduced Turbo Power 2 including an auto sense model that did exactly that. It cleaned at a lower power level until it detected heavy dirt and grit then it boosted up the power. Once it stopped, it stopped detecting the dirt then the power went down to a normal level instead of the higher level. Nothing new for Dyson just like the permanent on off switch is nothing new. So let's recap what I like about this permanent on off switch. I like the auto sense of dirt detect feature. I like the removable battery. I don't like the tiny, tiny bin. Now this is a lighter, slimmer model and I would recommend this if you're in the market for a Dyson and you want something lighter, this is certainly very light and easy to use. But it does mean because it's light and small, it's got a very small bin. And I'm, in fact, I'm just sort of over the max fill line, as you can see. So the max fill line police will be coming to my house, I expect, after this video to tell me off. So basically, even after one room, I've had to empty it because it was, it's getting too full. So I've been taking it out to my bin most of the time to empty it. Sometimes I've used another vacuum cleaner to suck out the dirt. But what happens with this, and I'll show you, hopefully it'll do it. It doesn't empty as cleanly as some of the, as some of the uh, bigger Dysons I've got. Now it's supposed to clean the mesh shroud, this silver bit, when you empty it. But, well, we'll see. I'll show you what happens. So to empty the Dyson, you've got this little red lever. I'll just back off a bit. And you push this down, obviously, over your outside bin, I, I would say, not your internal bin, your outside bin especially if you've got allergies, press it down. You'll have to shake it. Right, it's calling me a liar, but I can assure you, right, it has actually 
done a fairly good job this time round. But a lot of the time, I've either had to put my hands in, or most of the time, to be honest, I've pressed this button here, taken the bin off entirely and shaken it out. I mean, there's still little bits of fluff and dog hair on here. So there we go, put the bin back. There's a certain knack to it. Is it going to work yet? Also, I made the mistake of, and I, you'd think it wouldn't happen with the permanent on off trigger, but I made the mistake of when the bin was open, I knocked the on off switch on. And what that does, it'll suck any dirt that's still in the bin right through to the filter. So I only did it once, but when I looked at the filter, it was covered in dust. I vacuumed that off with my Henry. But um, yeah, you've got to be aware when the bin is open on a Dyson, don't squeeze the trigger or accidentally press the on off button. If you do, take the filter out and you'll see how dirty it's got. So I can't really show you how dirty the filter was because it's only yesterday I had to vacuum that off with a cylinder cleaner. So, but all in all, I think it's pretty good at filtering the dust from the Airstream. What else? Well, the, the hard floor nozzle was a bit gimmicky when I first detected this. Haha, <laughs> excuse the pun. When I had this on my other Dyson that's got this feature. It would be better if this laser was at both sides. There's a little tiny laser light that is supposed to highlight dirt and dust. But it is a bit one-sided. They could have done one with a laser this side, so it's more of a concentrated beam. But I must say, when I, I didn't like this at first, but um, it's grown on me. It is better to use this head than the carpet and floor nozzle. You can use this on your hard floors if you want to, it's fine. But I find this one, it's very light, very manoeuvrable. And yes, in darker areas, you don't want really bright lights because it's not going to show up, but it does actually really highlight the dust and dirt. And it also highlights when it isn't picking it up as well. But yeah, I like this and it doesn't scrape along the floor. It feels very soft. It's very maneuverable. And, you know, the dirt detect feature works on this as well on a hard floor. So it'll boost the power if it comes across more dirt. I also find though, occasionally, the light cuts out on this one and a few times when I've been using the motorized carpet floor head it's cut out. Now I think the weakness with this cleaner and with quite a few other Dysons is here where the wand joins the cleaner. Now when they're brand new it's, it's already, can you see, there's movement here. If you use that for a long time, I think that's going to wear out. And especially on a, a thicker pile carpet such as this, you can, you can actually feel it straining and flexing. And I think if I was to use this long term, that's going to fail. But yeah, I'm not going to be using this long term because I've got a lot of vacuum cleaners. And I like to mix things up. But yeah, this head is pretty good. As I say, I have to use it on Eco on this carpet if I use it any higher than eco well if I use it on I've never used boost the whole month I've never needed to use boost I've occasionally accidentally switched boost on that drains the battery really quickly and it, it, the air that comes out when you're using boost is very hot straight away it's wow you can feel it so eco but occasionally I have been able to use this on the auto setting but when I'm pulling the machine back if I try pushing it often on auto it will cut out, the motorized head will cut out. And despite the fact that this particular head doesn't have the little suction slide control of some other models, I found it pretty good, more than adequate for my carpets and occasionally the floors. If I couldn't be bothered to change the head over, I would just go over the floor with it. And also, yes, I have used it just before making this video. I quickly finished cleaning my stairs in this configuration. So, you know, it's, it's not bad. And despite it's not got anti-hair wrap, this, the later models have a little comb at the back that's supposed to remove hairs. I've never found this particular style of Dyson nozzle to be very bad for wrapping hairs around. Let's have a look at the inside. I'll see if I can open it without, you need a coin really, or a screwdriver. 
but I, I might be able to do it without. No, I can't. I'll just get a, I'll just get something to put in my slot here. I've got a key, so I just need to turn it to the unlocked side. Oh, it's making a mess. So this is only a month of use. It is dropping bits. And you can see there's some dust build up inside there. There's, there's the bearing. Not too bad. And then inside that looks pretty good. There's no major build up of anything there. Yeah, so as I said, it's only, it's only a month of use in a fairly clean house. I'd have to have a look at that after a few months use if I was going to use it for a few months. But you can at this stage with the brush out, you can give this a wipe. It's a bit hard to clean properly because of all this gubbins in the middle. And you can see where the plastic, I don't think it's scratched, but it, it, it's got a bit of muck on it. I don't know if it's scratched actually. No, I think that would probably wipe off. So yeah, not too bad that. So back that goes in. It's sprung loaded, so I have to hold it down while I'm popping the end cap back on. But yes, it's important with any vacuum, not just a Dyson. You do need to do some simple maintenance from time to time. If you want it to last longer. They have managed to close that without using my key. Bit of dust on me. So yes. I've not really used this much. I've used it on upholstery, um, used it on my mattress when I changed my bedding this month. It was fine. I tend to find this nozzle's better on the stairs than using this one. And um, yes, I've used the two onboard tools. I've attached the crevice tool, especially in my kitchen, down the side of my fridge freezer and dishwasher. There's, there's a quite a gap. So I've, I've attached that and gone down there with it. And I have used the combination nozzle, mainly the dusting part. Not for a major job, but I, I got some crumbs off the top of my toaster and, and just little things like that. I do like the fact that these two small tools are on board. I suppose they can get in the way. So if you put the crevice tool on the top, that might be better actually. I had it on the bottom. So yeah, it's good to have the two small tools on board. Um, and I don't think I really use the dusting brush that's also included with this model. But all in all, I have to say, I've quite liked using this machine. I like its lightweightness, if that's a word. I like the permanent on-off button. It's performed very well and it's relatively quiet, especially on the lower power settings. So I'm going to give it a thumbs up, to be honest. I can't comment on long-term use but I think there could be some issues with this machine if you were to use it all the time permanently. But I'm sure if you get anything wrong with it, you can contact Dyson and they'll uh, send you out a new part or have the machine fixed under guarantee. So that's the Dyson V12 Detect Slim Absolute. That's the outgoing vacuum. Let's have a look what vacuum I'm going to be using for the month of October. My regular viewers may have got a clue by the red socks I've been wearing in this video. Yes, vacuum of the month for October 2022 has to be the brand new cordless bagged Henry Quick. I wouldn't normally use two bagless cleaners in a row on my vacuum of the month series. I probably would have liked to have used a mains powered machine. But this Henry is brand new. It's created a lot of buzz amongst the vacuum cleaner enthusiasts, positive and negative comments, and a lot of Henry fans are itching to try one out. So in order for me to give you a more in-depth verdict of this machine, I think it's only fair that I use it as my only vacuum cleaner for the month of October. Obviously I've used it a bit since getting it, and previously I've been using my pneumatic quick, which is basically more or less the same cleaner. 
So I do know what it's like to use around my home and yeah, it's pretty good. I have to say though, it is considerably heavier than the Dyson that I've been using in September. But it's heavier, yes, but it does feel a lot more solid than the Dyson. And the fact that we have a large one litre bag means there's gonna be no trips to the bin at all, I suspect, for the whole month. I think this bag in my house will certainly last a month, but it'd be interesting to see the bag after a month of use. If you saw my launch video for the Henry Quick, you'll know that it comes with 26 dust bags. So that should last, I would say it's hard to judge, but well over a year, I would say for most households, if you're just using the machine normally and not putting excessive amounts of dirt down just to play with the machine, but just as a normal consumer would use their vacuum, I think 26 bags, I would say would last more than a year probably in an average home. But it'll be interesting to see at the end of this month how full this bag is. And when you want to replace the bags after you've used up all the 26, these were available in packs of 10 from myhenry.com. Time of making the video, I think it's £12.98 for one of these tubes of 10 bags. Don't pay more than that. Other retailers are selling these for £20. I even saw one retailer selling them for £80. <laughs> so no, get them direct from myhenry.com. Uh, it's the cheapest place I've seen them so far. So yeah, 10 pods, um, that's gonna last ages. A few of the negative comments I've read about this cleaner is the fact that it uses dust bags. But for me, that's its biggest positive. But we all have different views. If you want a bagless cleaner, you buy one. If you want a bagged cleaner, you buy a bagged cleaner. I personally prefer to have a bagged vacuum. So I've had a, a recent comment. I got this one today. This is from Zodiac FML. Sounds powerful. I guess bag vacuums have little resistance with new clean bags. Certainly, this will clog soon and require ungodly amounts of bags if used regularly. I discovered a way to dump dirt of cheap cordless so that it doesn't clog in a week. No place for bag vacs in a residential setting. No place, what? No place for bag vacs in a residential setting. As far as I'm concerned, that is the best place. If you've got allergies, it doesn't matter how good your bagless cleaner is with all its HEPA filters and sealed system. As soon as you open that bagless container to empty the dirt, you know, you're gonna be put on a, a, a respirator, a big mask, try and empty it into a carrier bag. Dirt's gonna get out. I mean, you might be exposed to a small amount of dirt in a bagged vacuum, but nothing like a bagless cleaner. And of course, in a commercial setting, you don't see many bagless cleaners. They all use bagged. They use Henry's in commercial settings. If it's an upright, they tend to use SIBOs. They all take bags. So if they use bags in commercial settings, why, why is it wrong to use it in a domestic? Anyway, that's their opinion. It's not mine. I'd much rather have a bag. And as I said, one of the worst things about using that Dyson V12 last month was the fact I had to empty it. Not just every day, it was almost after every room sometimes. Certainly after cleaning my whole downstairs, I had to empty it. And then upstairs, I had to empty it again. So that's going to be a plus point. As I said, this machine is bulkier and quite a bit heavier than the machine I've been using. So that's something... Well, we'll see how it is in action. I'm not gonna use the extended handle that comes with it. I found, for me, it's, it's just as comfortable to use the handle that's actually on the machine. Um, yeah, obviously we've got the two small tools, the combination nozzle, very Dyson-esque, and the crevice tool. I expect I'll be using those from time to time. And for my stairs, because there isn't a small nozzle, and that is a little bit of an oversight as far as I'm concerned, I would like to see a mini motorised tool option available for this. It might come later. And also, as I said before, a little flexible hose attachment. Be easy enough for Pneumatic to make one, I'm sure, even make it in their factory uh, in Somerset. They could do an additional extended toolkit for this. Uh, comprising of a, a flexible hose and some other bits and pieces that would be ideal so I'm going to miss a hose on this machine but yes for my stairs I've no real other option because this nozzle 
not really good for your stairs it's not it's going to take a while so i will use the main carpet and floor head when i'm cleaning my stairs for the month of october and for one week of october i will be at my mum's house again so i will be taking henry quick to continue cleaning my mum's so it'll have some different carpets and floors to try out so yeah there it is have you got your henry quick yet what do you think of it you can put any comments below if you own one i'd like to hear opinions from people who've actually got one of these do you like it what don't you like about it feed it back because you never know the people at pneumatic might look at the comments and uh, incorporate some changes in future models if you've watched this video to the bitter end, thank you very much. Please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't do so already and click the bell icon and you'll be notified of all my new uploads, which will include, of course, on the 1st of November, my verdict on the Henry Quick and I'll be showing you what vacuum will be vacuum of the month for November. I think I'll go back to a mains powered machine for November. But October, it's all about the Henry Quick. And of course, it's all about not putting the heating on and trying not to use a lot of electricity. If you live in the UK, you'll know what I'm talking about. So for me and the Henry Quick, it's goodbye. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all very soon.